Hello and welcome to M Plus Workshop 7. This is Janice Cookin. In this workshop, I will provide examples of how M Plus can be used to support a variety of analytic techniques using multiple groups. There are two main areas of multiple group analysis. One is testing for measurement and variance of a latent variable measurement model using multiple groups. Measurement invariance is essential to using a measure across groups or across time. And there are four main categories of measurement invariance, which I will talk about a little bit later. The other is testing for differences in results by group, basically looking at using the group variable within the analysis. So before we say anything more, just to make sure uh, we are talking, know what we're talking about, um, we need to know the group variable or latent variable representing group. So this is not a place where you can um, incorporate this with uh, some sort of um, analytic technique where you're defining a group variable. So the group variable needs to be known. You need to be able to use dummy coding to support the analysis. Um, and uh, most of the time in this group uh, setting, we will be talking about analysis with two groups. But most of the time, you can extend that to comparing to more if you compare them two at a time. Um, here are some of the resources I'll be using this week. Uh, as always, statmodel.com, figure it out. And then I am actually going to be taking uh, some materials from Dave Kenny's uh, um, website. I, I think I mentioned it before. It's an excellent website on structural equation modeling, although at the time he prepared this when he was a uh, professor at University of Connecticut. He was using AMOS, uh, which is part of SPSS, uh, and not M+. So I will be putting some of this together using M+. All right, so what do we mean by group membership? We will focus on group as a variable that can mean membership in a category that you can identify with accuracy. For example, you can identify race, gender, ethnicity, occupation, major, age, grade, citizenship, and many other things. And many times we will use dummy coding to support our analysis. Um, so that's what we mean. You're part of a group, but you might be uh, male versus female. We may want to do uh, an analysis like that. You also might um, want to use a variable to identify which treatment group you, the participant is in. And for the most part, we're going to be, as I mentioned, restricting our conversations to groups of two. All right, so I want to share with you an example. This is uh, a variable from a data set called the HSLS09 data set that I've been working in. And it's the variable for race coding. So here you see the uh, definitions from the code book of all the different races that are coded for this variable X1 race. Well, in M plus, I can actually use the defined statement and select, um, here, let me move that. So I can select, um, a one of these and say I want to look at um, an analysis for one group versus all other. So this is a way that you would define a dummy code where you would say if x1 race is 3 then black equals 1 otherwise black equals 0 and actually you would need I said that backwards you should actually use the coding as I have it listed here. Now this is um, such a speedy way of of um, discussing coding and dummy coding. Um, actually, the coding of dummy variables could be a full set of workshops itself. So if you need more information, I would suggest you look at this SAGE research methods um, website. So now I want to talk more about uh, multiple group analysis. Now it involves is systematically placing a series of cross-group equality constraints on the model, model parameters. So the, we compare the fit of two models, the original and the constrained. And if the constrained is not significantly different, uh, we'll have uh, some decision to make about whether or not which of those models uh, is better. And I will lead you through that later in our discussion. But first, let's, let's establish what we're doing here by looking at mediation. Now, we talked about mediation in the prior workshops. And mediator is the third variable that comes between the cause, x, and the effect, y, and transmits the causal influence from the cause to the effect. Uh, the indirect uh, portion of it goes through the mediator and the direct goes directly from X to Y, making up the total effect. So mediators are often called something like a middleman because they help explain the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. So X affects Y because X affects M, which affects Y. 
X and Y are related in part or fully because of M. So what kind of a question might we ask that would involve a binary variable? Well, X could be binary, um, but M can't really be binary because if, you know, in most cases, X can't act upon M and change it. So strictly speaking, it doesn't make sense to have a categorical variable for the mediator that's not manipulable. Um, but this will be more, uh, make more sense if I give you an example. So um, let's think about exercise levels and how they might affect weight loss. So if X is exercise and Y is weight loss, uh, there is some uh, um, relationship between exercise levels and weight loss. Um, so X, but if I wanted to know whether this changes based on your gender, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, it makes sense that it could, gender has a, a moderating effect, but exercise actually can't change your gender. But the amount of weight loss can vary by gender. So gender must be a moderator. And if you need to think about this more, I would recommend actually listening to some YouTube videos on mediation versus moderation that discuss many different examples. Get there are situations where we would be interested in the effect of a moderator that is categorical in the mediator relationship. And that is the moderated mediation example I worked uh, on in workshop five. And it uh, was called demo 18. All right, so here is, um, here's the, um, the diagram representing demo 18, where uh, this is from the HSB data set where we have um, test scores and we the question I think it's slightly different here but the basic setup is the same how does math affect a reading so as a students score on math uh, have a, some sort of an effect on reading and is that mediated through social studies and then is that does that vary by gender so we would set this up as a moderated mediation example so the question is, is the effect of math ability on reading ability, which is mediated by social state, stu, I'm sorry, social studies also moderated by gender? So that's the type of question that we'll be looking at um, again this week. But I want to talk about another uh, application of multiple groups, and that is invariance. So what is invariance and why is invariance so important? So first of all, invariance means the measurement instrument does not vary across groups or across measurement occasions, and that is why it is called invariant. Now, it's very unfortunate that it, we are using this term invariant because it is not really that easy to understand. Invariant, non-invariant, variant. Well, invariant means it does not vary, and I didn't make this up. A lot of the terms in measurement and statistics are a little bit tough, So, but if you start to use it, I'm sure you'll be able to manage just fine. So here's an example. Here are two images of two different 12-inch rulers. It's hard to show this on PowerPoint, but these are not the same. So let's say I gave you instructions to measure some fabric, and let's say you were making masks. Well, um, I said to use a particular measure um, using roller, ruler A, and then I use ruler B. So your results would not turn out the same as mine. When we use a physical measure, we have to be sure the measurement instrument is accurate and consistent so that the measurement is, is correct. Invariance is related to that principle of consistency when the measure is used with different groups. So here are some um, ideas regarding in, uh, invariance. Uh, there are many different types of measurements used in research and in social science, and we use indicator variables that measure a latent trait. You have done this probably many times where you have a survey and you'll have five questions on one particular factor and five on another, and those five are called the indicator variables. And a critical criteria is invariance, which means the measures have to measure the trait in the same way across groups and time. If a measure is invariant and our research shows that there's a difference between the two groups on that measure, we can actually conclude the two gr groups are in fact different. But if the measure is not invariant, the two groups may be exactly the same, but the measure is not functioning consistently. In fact, if the measurement instrument is not invariant, it is biased. And you, if you use a biased instrument, your um, results are also biased.
Now I said something very quickly and I did not explain it. I said something about the same set of factor loadings. Well, invariance has different levels. Let me show you this next slide. This is how invariance is defined in terms of factor analytic terms. It can go from the least constrained model, which is called configural invariance, which means the model specifications are equal across groups. And that means that the factors, uh, the same indicator variables load on the same factors across all groups, but the loadings might be different. Then you can move up towards uh, where your, your loadings could be equal across group. You might even have some variant of this where some of the loadings are the same and some are not. Then you might also uh, constrain the intercepts to be equal across groups. And then the strict or strong measurement invariance is when everything is constrained across groups. I highly recommend you take the time to consider invariance in your work. I also recommend you use some of the resources I provide to learn more about its meaning. But for now, I'm going to share with you how you can test for invariance using M plus for a few different examples. This week, we're going to be using um, four different demo sets. And each, I'm going to call them demo sets because um, they actually have multiple cases within each set. Um, we're going to use something called a grouping statement to specify that the variable that indicates uh, grouping is, is uh, whatever it is that we're defining. And the model statement then specifies the model for the first group and subsequent group. Subsequent model statements are used to indicate any differences in the model that should be estimated for other groups. So our first, our, our four demos are first demo 18. I just called it demo 18 because it has the similar mediation and moderation example as we used in workshop five. Demo 23, then following the other sequence, uh, we've had 22 demos so far. Uh, we are going to do uh, a similar problem, but we are using uh, mediation, use, we're going to show mediation using the grouping variable instead of do, using the model structure and interaction. Then we're going to go to demo 24. This is the NEF example from David Kenny's website, Testing Invariance, and he used Amos. And that there are there is a pretty big difference between Amos and M plus, but for um, for the three examples I do, the outcome decision is the same between uh, what the decision is that my work shows versus his work shows on on the website. And finally, I have an example of testing measurement invariance using something called a configural command, and I just want to show that very quickly, um, just so that you're aware that it exists. So once again, if you have any questions, please contact me um, and I'd be happy to work with you on M+. And thank you for your attention. And now it's time to run M+.